the, the uh, anyway, the funeral was online on, uh, what was the site? We're not going to worry about the PowerPoint. Everything's old-fashioned today. I mean, I had a PowerPoint, but I couldn't figure out the pin. <laughs> and I don't remember a pin being on that laptop, amen. And so anyways, pastor's keeping me out of things. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Yeah, was it? Okay. We'll bring Jason's laptop in. Okay. <laughs> But in our lesson today, um, I actually got this content from Adrian Rogers, who I, I love to listen to um, out of Tennessee here. He's passed away now. But uh, the title of today's message is God's Presence in the Hour of Death. And so what, one of our key verses here today is Hebrews 2.14. Hebrews 2.14. And, uh, and 15. And what... Um, I, uh, you could read that. but uh, And so here, um, recently I was reading the obituaries. That sounds so morbid, but I was reading the obituaries. And I found that over the last number of months, there was a number of people that were my age and younger, 25 and 44, and that had passed on. And uh, I was thinking about that. Uh, many of them lived in their 80s and 90s, which is good to see. But um, de uh, death, he was hitting people in my age frame. And so um, sometimes people are fearful of death. And in Hebrews 2.14, it says this, For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and, and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that hath power of death, that is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And so Jesus came to um, free us from bondage, free, free us from fear. The Bible says, uh, perfect love casteth out fear. And the Bible says, God is love. And so when we have the presence of God in our lives, we don't have to fear. Uh, the child of God can, can actually be joyful when it's their time, time to go. Uh, and so, in, in our, our um, lesson today, one of the Bible characters that um, had great faith when it was his time to go was the uh, Bible character Joseph. And as we read through Genesis, uh, a lot of Genesis is talking about um, the character Joseph. Uh, and so here, unless the Lord Jesus, unless we live to see the second coming of Christ, when Christ will come uh, before we die, we, we will um, be like all, we will go to the grave. Joseph, the man, uh, man of God, dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house, and he lived a long time. He lived to be 110 years old. But in Genesis 5, 50, 23, it says this, and Joseph saw Ephraim's children, the third generation, and the children of Maker, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die. And God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land into the land that I swear unto Abraham, and to Isaac, and to Jacob. And so Joseph, and it says, uh, and Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye will carry up my bones from hence. And so Joseph died being 110 years old. And so he, he lived a long life, but it wasn't an easy life. We know that he was betrayed. Uh, we know that he was sold as a slave. He was in prison all the way till he was, for many years, till he was 30 years old. Then at 30 years old, he came up out of prison and became the second in command, or second ruler. But he, he wasn't on the throne, but he was in charge. We know about Joseph that when that seven years of plenty, then there was seven years of famine, that he was the one that God sent ahead, even though his life wasn't easy, God sent him ahead to spare much, to save much flesh alive, the Bible says. And so even though bad things happened to him, he, God turned it into good in his life. 
Out of everything included in the book of Genesis is the life of Joseph. The New Testament commented only on one thing, and he wanted his family in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 22, it says, to carry his bones out of Egypt. And so of all the things it could have said, it said, that's what it said. And so Joseph, when it came time to die, he wanted his family to know that I don't want to, I, I don't want to be here. When it's your time to go get up and go out to Canaan, I want you to carry my bones. And so the first thought today is remember the unbreakable promises of God. Again, Genesis 50, 24, And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die. And so if we're going to have peace at the time of death, we need to have the promises of God to stand upon. And as Pastor mentioned in a message a while back, he said, I don't, honestly, I remember him saying this, I think that when I die, I'll be a little nervous, not because I don't know where I'm going. I know I'm going to heaven, he said, and I, I can say the same thing, but it's just we never experienced it before. We don't, we've, we haven't, what the Bible talks about crossing the Jordan River, <laughs> we haven't crossed over. And so there will be some apprehension, but Joseph he had that faith, and that was before even, I believe, the, Moses wrote the first five books of the, the Word of God. But Joseph loved God. Joseph had a relationship with God. And he was going to be faithful. It says, by faith, in, in Hebrews eleven twenty two again it says this, By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the deep the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. And so Joseph knew the, the promise that Abraham, um, when, before Abraham became, when he was Abram, that God would make a great nation. And he, and he believed the, God's word, whether it was verbal or written. And we know later it was written. But he was uh, very uh, faithful to God's word. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. At one time, uh, God actually spoke to the prophets. Um, but now, the way God speaks to us is through his word, because we have, we have what we have. Uh, now, I know there's people that, um, they may um, rely heavily on dreams and such. I'm not saying dreams are bad. Uh, dreams may, can probably be helpful, but the main thing is we need to base uh, uh, our lives on the Word of God. Joseph knew of this promise, again, from Abraham. And so if, if we're going to practice the presence of God at the time of death, we have to do it with faith. And what is faith? The Bible says, one definition says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, so we as believers, we have not seen Jesus Christ, but we believe in Him. We haven't seen Him, yet we love Him. And, and that's what pleases God. Uh, now, if we, had, if, if we have to have evidence before we believe, boy, that's not, that's not real faith, is it? But God encourages us to continue on even if we don't see a miracle, even if we don't see a healing, even if we don't see something miraculous happen, to continue on in faith. So what is, what, what is faith not? Faith isn't positive thinking. I like positive thinking. I like being around positive people, but faith isn't just being positive. Um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people who write um, positive books, right? No. What's the one? Um, Norman Vincent Pill. He wrote one. <laughs> Be positive. I don't. I can't remember the name. But um, there's people that write um, things. But that's not what faith is. Faith isn't um, a following a hunch. Hunches can be good, right, Dave? Especially when hunting. You can have a good hunch sometimes, and it works out. Sometimes it doesn't work out too well. But uh, it's not. That's not what it is. It's not optimism. It's not just being self-confident and self-sufficient. Faith is getting a word from God, from the word of God, and believing it. 
And uh, again, Hebrews 11, 1, Joseph said, I want you to take my bones up out of Egypt. In, in verse 1 of uh, Hebrews 11, it says, the word hope does not mean maybe so or perhaps so. It, it's a definite. <laughs> I remember um, uh, years ago, my wife uh, would attest to this, but uh, um, on Saturdays, we'd go out and invite children to church for Sunday. And sometimes, not to be... Um, <laughs> It's a little different here, amen, when I go with pastor. Um, if they say no on the first time, we don't go back. We wait till the next week. But I remember there's was, there was a couple times they would say, you'd say, do you want to come to church? And they would say, instead of saying yes or no, they would say what? Maybe. So what did you do? You're like, well, I don't know if they are or aren't. <laughs> but aren't you glad that God isn't like that? God, when he says he's going to do something. He, he, he follows through. And, um, and so here, this matter of faith, uh, is, there was a preacher, um, it wasn't Billy Graham, but he was uh, both the same uh, as far as influence. His name was Dwight L. Moody. And in the uh, early, uh, late 1800s, um, he... Uh, was used greatly of God in North America, um, both in uh, North America and in like England. And he did many uh, uh, things for God. But he thought, you know, I'm going to, he said this, he gave this testimony, he said, I wanted faith. He said, I prayed for faith. I prayed for faith. I prayed for faith. And I keep praying for faith. But my faith didn't grow. Then he said, I was reading in the book of Romans that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And he said, I stopped asking God for faith. I got into the Bible and saturated my soul with the word of God. And my faith began to grow and to grow and to grow. Amen. And so we know here... Um, that one day we're going to get up and go. We're going to go home. And uh, the Bible says we're going to be uh, uh, basically um, changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. The Bible calls this time when Jesus comes the blessed hope. And this time is based upon uh, the absolute assurance of God. Just as Joseph had much faith and he loved to be around uh, God, God and God's people. We need to have that kind of faith. Joseph said to his brother, I die and God will visit you. And so God, who cannot lie, said, you know what? I'm coming again. I am coming. And so the second thing is, the thought is we need to rest in the unshakable power of God. So the promises without the power to fulfill the promises are vain. But God has the power to fulfill his word. And, um, Joseph was assured of, of God, um, the Almighty God, fulfilling his promises, and we can't be. Faith is not shaken by appearance or reason. Sometimes human reasoning can get in the way of what God wants. But God um, took Joseph from the prison and made him basically the prime minister of uh, Egypt. And likewise, he can take our situation and lift us up. Literally lift us up. I, um, I, um, work, I, as many of you know, I clean at a Presbyterian church, and yesterday they had a big Christmas uh, celebration. Amen. <laughs> they called it a Christmas Bazaar. And one of the ladies said, yeah, it's bizarre. <laughs> But it was just, no, it was good, but they, um, they sold tickets, and it was a good time, I guess. I wasn't there. It was like 100 ladies, and I wasn't around. Amen. <laughs> but uh, I don't know where I was going with that anyway. It doesn't matter. But, uh, oh, yeah, I know where I was going. A lot of times when I'm talking to the pastor there, a lot of t things are like um, the Bible is like types or allegories where I take it more literally, most things. And uh, I believe, as pastor says, 90% of the Bible is literal. There are about 10% that's other. But uh, 
it's a literal coming, a physical coming. Jesus is going to come in a bodily <laughs> form. He's going to, he's going to, it's going to be visible, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and they which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. And so here, uh, faith isn't just being, having emotions. Emotions change sometimes with the weather, okay? But the Bible says about God's nature is that He changes not, meaning He's going to stick to what He said. And so, uh, let me give another verse. John 5, 24 says, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. I met people that say, well, I used to believe, but I don't believe anymore. I'm thinking, I don't know about that. <laughs> you're going to keep believing, amen, if, you, if you're one of his. Martin Luther, a great reformer, had an, it said he had an encounter with Satan. It seemed like Satan was just face to face with him, and Satan said to Luther, Do you feel your sins are forgiven? Luther says, It doesn't matter how I feel. It's what God says. Amen. Amen. And so feelings can be deceitful. Feelings could uh, change. But God changes not. Now, sometimes faith can... Uh, also, faith cannot be shaken by delay. Just because God hasn't did something yet doesn't mean He's not going to do it. And there's a different prophecy verses. Faith can wait. And in, in, in Habakkuk 2, 3, I'll just read it. It says, For the vision is yet for the appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And so, even though um, the prophets had visions of the future, we have the revelation of what God is going to do in the future. And people say, well, it didn't happen yet, so therefore it's not going to happen. Well, wrong. Just because God delays sometime doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And so we have to keep having that faith. And there's a couple verses in Ezekiel. Uh, you could jot them down. I'm just going to read them. And it's, it, it's kind of actually... Um, could you turn to Ezekiel chapter 26? I'll have you turn to a verse. I won't turn to too many, but why don't we turn to that one? And so here, um, in Ezekiel 26 verse 3, it's kind of a prophecy verse of what God was going to do. And it didn't seem like it was going to be fulfilled. It seemed like it was delayed. But in verse 3, we'll look at verse 3, and then we'll go to verse 13. But verse 3, it says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Tyrus, and will cause many nations to come up against thee, as the sea causes his waves to come up. And then if you skip down to verse, actually 12, verse 12, it says, And they shall make a spoil of thy riches, and make a prey of thy merchandise, and shall break down thy walls, and destroy thy pleasant houses, and they shall lay thy stones, and thy timber, and thy dust in the midst of the water. So he said, that's kind of a strange verse. What was that a prophecy of? Well, in about 550 B.C., Nebuchadnezzar came against the nation of Tyre. And when the people saw Nebuchadnezzar coming, they could not defeat this Babylonian monarch. And so, there was an island just off the coast, and the people fled to the island, and they left the city. They thought they would be safe there on that island. Well, and there is ancient Tyre. The walls are still there. The ruins and the buildings were still there. The ancient timbers were still there. It was not like a, a, a rock, a top of a rock, which uh, the Bible said it would be. It looked like Ezekiel's prophecy really was not going to be fulfilled literally. Actually, but then what happened was more than 200 years later, there was a man named Alexander the Great. And Alexander came, uh, uh, the people of Tyre had gone to this island, and at this time, they had built one of the strongest navies in the world. And the, 
and it was a great navy, and they felt powerful and invincible on this island. But Alexander the Great asked the people of Tyre for some help, I believe, in a battle. And they said, no, we don't want, we're comfortable here, we don't want to help you. Well, this infuriated Alexander the Great, and he said, you know what, I'm coming out to get you. He said, well, no, we have a powerful navy, we're not afraid of you. But Alexander had a great army. And Alexander the Great decided he was going to do something. He said, I'm going to build a causeway to come out to you. I'm coming after you. And he told his soldiers, we're building a causeway out to that island. We're going to march on that island. Well, where are you going to get the materials? He, he said, they asked. You see these timbers? You see these stones? You see these walls? Take them and build a causeway. And they built a causeway from the coast of the Mediterranean out to the island where the city of Tyre was. And they took all the stones and all the rocks and all the timber and all the dirt and dust. And when they were done, that place was as bald as a rock. As the Bible said, the fishermen would spread out their nets. And so as you can see, sometimes prophecies do not look like they're being fulfilled. But in the end, they will be. And God's word is true, and it always comes to pass as he says it. So what, what is the um, prophecy concerning us? One day, we're going to get up and get out of here. All right? Sometimes, sometimes I wish it was today. But you know what? God has a purpose. We're here for a reason. And it's really to help other people around us. And so, uh, when God says he's going to do something, he's going to do it literally. Uh, when the Bible says that um, Jesus was going to be born of a virgin in Bethlehem, he was. When the Bible said that he is coming in a, a second coming for us, delay means nothing. He will fulfill his word. The Bible says that in the end days, as we get closer to Christ's coming, in 2 Peter 3, 4, that people are going to say, and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as ever they were from the beginning of the creation. So, you know, a lot of people believe in evolution, but these people, they, they couldn't deny creation. They, they, they just thought everything was normal, everything was going to continue on since the beginning of creation. But, <laughs> the Bible continues six verses later, 2 Peter 3.8 3, uh, 3, it says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. And so here, with time, time with God is like, the Bible says that God is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He knows the end from the beginning. And we don't, but He, he sees it all. He sees the past, present, and future. And uh, He's already in the future, amen? And uh, it says in verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and the heaven will pass away with fervent heat. So they're gonna, it's going to pass away. And when do we get close to that time? It's when people say that there's peace and safety. Or peace and security. Okay? Uh, there's going to come a time where people are going to say, Boy, all, every, the wars are done. Everything is secure. And then the Bible says that sudden destruction will come upon them. And so we know that this is uh, true and this will happen. Number three... Receive the unmistakable peace of God. And so in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of uh, uh, maybe when it's our time to go to heaven, that we could have the unmistakable peace of God. Not only knowing that we are going to heaven, but we have helped others to ha have the knowledge of Christ. Exodus 13, 19, it says, And Moses took the bones of Joseph, Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn or promised the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And so here, 
um, God used Moses to carry up Joseph's bones out of the land of Egypt. In Joshua 24, 32, it says, And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem, a parcel of ground from Jacob brought the sons of Hamor from the father of Shechem for a hundred pieces of silver, and it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. So Shechem is also where Abraham was buried. And so can you imagine when uh, they went to lower him into the ground, if those bones could speak, maybe a chuckle from a knuckle, a little glee from a knee, a little grin from a shin, amen? They were ha uh, happy. They were buried where um, God had promised. You see, folks, um, friends, if the... If you know the Lord and you know the unbreakable promises of God, the unshakable power of God, you will experience the undeniable peace of God when it's your time. The Bible says in Daniel 12, 2, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and others to everlasting contempt. And so... Uh, it is, um, I believe Joseph knew that God was not finished with his bones. Not only were they buried in Shechem, but one day he could, he could um, maybe look towards when Christ was going to come. That he was going to get a glorified body like unto Christ. Amen. And so just as the Old Testament saints had hope in God's promises, we can as well. In conclusion, Joseph left a legacy to his brothers. Every time they saw a coffin coming with Joseph's bones, they were reminded of the brevity of life and the length of eternity. If they were living in prosperity, those bones reminded them that they would have to one day leave it all. If they were living in adversity, those bones reminded them that there was a better day coming. And so, often every... Uh, uh, Every time there's a funeral or, or such, we are reminded that today is the day of salvation. Uh, some, some may say, well, I, I have more time. I can, I can uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come to Christ one day. I'll uh, put my faith in Christ one day. But Jesus says, today is the day of salvation. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation. He said, you know, we know that in the provocation, the Bible says that the the children of Israel, they provoked the Lord to anger ten different times. I don't know about you, but if somebody provokes me one time, <laughs> I get on them sometimes. You know what I mean? But God was very patient. And he was provoked ten times. And then we know that not everybody crossed over. Not everybody crossed over into Canaan. But those that were 20 years and under. Uh, and so, but God was very patient. And God is very patient to us. And I'm thankful for that. At this time, why don't we uh, uh, sing our closing hymn? And uh, what did I pick? What number?